Hey guys, in this video, I wanna to talk to you about the hierarchy of fat loss. Now this one's a really, really important to understand this one because this is gonna to explain to you in a big nutshell is basically how fat loss works and where you need to create your focus to, where you need to push your focus to. Okay, so I've created here, don't uh, mind my messy writing and drawing, but I've created the hierarchy of fat loss pyramid here. Now, this is something that's really, really important to understand, so please stay with me here. So when it comes to look at, for us to lose body fat, we need to look at prioritizing the bottom part of our hierarchy while adding up to our least amount of priorities is here. What people usually do when they come into a gym and they're looking to lose body fat is that they'll go down this way and they'll look at trying to add in the first part of coming into the gym. And I'm sure maybe you've, you know, maybe you've experienced it or have seen other people do is they'll come in and they'll start looking at doing cardio or conditioning. You know, that's extremely common one that people are doing, but they're not looking after, you know, their training, their neat, their, their nutrition here. Even their sleep and stress can play a part in it too. So what we need to do is kind of flip it on the other side and look at working our way up. So the first one we need to look at is mastering, which you guys now know, is we master the nutrition side of things. If we are in this calorie deficit, we are going to lose body fat, period. That's it. And if we're not losing body fat at all, then we're not in a calorie deficit. So then we may need to look at decreasing our calories further or even increasing our energy expenditure higher. So that is the very first part. So we need to you know, master hitting our protein. We still need to eat good, wholesome, nutritional valued foods. They're gonna help with how we're feeling. Those foods aren't going to help with us losing body fat, but we need to make sure that we're eating healthy, nutritional value foods. It's gonna do well for us on our insides. So we need to firstly master the nutritional side of things. The second part that people misunderstand or, or uh, take for granted is our NEAT. And you guys know this now already, is that we need to make sure that we're increasing our NEAT as much as possible. We need to keep moving, keep fidgeting. That's gonna keep burning more calories and that's why we set certain step targets. It's not literally just steps because you could do this and you'll see the steps go up. It's about us moving ourselves. By me doing this, I'm still burning calories, okay? So we just, we need to make sure that we are constantly moving. We're parking further away from places to walk further. Um, you know, we're going for walks around the gym in our rest periods. Um, we're getting up more often. We're being more conscious if we're sitting at our desk more. Maybe we wanna spend 20 minutes, just do a quick little walk a lap of the office. Something like that where we're just being more conscious of us moving, because that's gonna be a massive part. Perhaps it's as well, you know, going for a walk. Every single morning, you're making that a daily habit. You're doing 30 minutes of a walk, which, I mean, already that a 30 minute walk is gonna be about four, three to 4,000 steps just from that 30 minute walk. So, you know, making some really, really good habits around this neat, okay? The next part is we wanna discuss in, is the training part. So we need to obviously, you know, your training is already covered, it's fine. So, you know, as long as we're training between three to five days per week, we're gonna be in the sweet spot. And we're always focusing on those big lifts, you know, the squats, the deadlifts, those hip thrusts, we've got chin-ups, lunges, like all those big compound lifts that are using multiple major muscle groups. And we're always focusing on trying to improve our strength and keep getting stronger over time. Sleep and stress is, would be the next one. So you, you may have already experienced this is that when your sleep is going down, your motivation to train decreases as well. You know, your adherence to how much, how you're wanting to eat is really hard as well. Like you just wanna eat other foods. You're not motivated by the goal that you've already set. There's so many factors as that comes into this is sleep and stress. Um, and if your sleep is down, then other things can start to play a, a factor into your lifestyle. You're gonna to wanna to eat more. You're not gonna to wanna to follow your nutritional recommendations anymore. You're not gonna be able to train as hard as you really want to. Um, you may not even wanna to come to the gym at all. There's so many factors into the sleep. Stress, you know, maybe when we're stressed, you know, one, it's gonna it's going to lead to water retention and we're gonna spike up our cortisol. But then also another thing is that stress can make us eat more food and then we have other priorities, to, well, other things that we're focusing on because we are so highly stressed. So the training already puts a stress on our body and so does, I guess, dieting puts a stress on our body. So we wanna try and minimize these stresses as much as possible. 
The last part that we want to focus on is the cardio and the conditioning. We only want to add this when we need, which you guys are understanding now is that this is not the be all end all. All this is doing is helping us increase our NEAT, that's it. But if we can move more, we don't need to add that in. So like you can add that in if you want to as a health standpoint, but in terms of looking for fat loss, we don't need to add this. If we are covering and getting these two right already, there is no need to get that. Over time, as our body starts to adapt and slow down the metabolic rate because it's getting used to how much that we're eating, that's when we could look at increasing our steps up more or if that's actually physically too hard to even get any more steps in because our days are just so consumed with training, it's consumed with work and other, uh, other commitments as well, then we would look at adding some cardio conditioning in. And, and you, most of you have already experienced this is we just add that in as splashes. It is a measurable thing so we can keep doing the same thing over time because it is benefiting us. And then what we would need to do is look at increasing that just a little bit more. So we only use this when required. But unfortunately, as I just said at the start of the video, is that other people like to go the other opposite way. Now, if they're doing the cardio and the conditioning first, but they are not looking after their nutrition and eating in a calorie deficit, they can train and they can do this as hard as they want. They're not gonna get the results that they're after. This is number one, this is number two, number three, number four, and number five. We don't need it, it's only when it's necessary. So I hope that makes sense for you guys. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.